What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here from Datadash and today is March 18th of 2024. Well folks, I hope you are having a fantastic day wherever you are because in today's video, I not only want to spend some time to talk about the recent correction we saw in Bitcoin's price alongside the altcoin market, but I want to spend some time to try to give a perspective on some short-term analysis of where we're heading over the next week or so according to price, the long-term trajectory, and most importantly, understanding the macro dynamics and how equity markets could very well lead the direction direction for crypto going forward in the next couple months. We got a lot to unpack here in today's video, so if you guys happen to enjoy, consider dropping a like and let's go ahead and kick things off. So I want to start here by talking a little bit about crypto markets, diving into the microsphere, analyzing what's going on with Bitcoin and altcoins. As we talked about in a prior video, we emphasized the point that this accelerated move we've had since January has been phenomenal. We've made some great returns during this period of time, betting on a few key altcoins and meme coins, as well as Bitcoin infrastructure. But the point I want to make here is that the accelerated move here was very equal to the percentage move we had back here from September of 2023 to January 2024. The only thing is that we had a much faster move here. So as we're building up momentum, risk taking is starting to grow and the ETF mania is continuing to build out. We've been having these accelerated moves in price and it's just been getting more and more confident over time. Even if you really take a step back here, analyze it from the lows, while well, we had a similar move here of around 96%, right? We had a period of stagnation for multiple months preceding that move. So if you generally kind of take it here, you get in these 90% plus moves in Bitcoin. Nice positive green action. So I'm not here to be you know negative and say that we can't continue that, that we can't be as we broke to new all-time highs, as we echoed in prior videos before. Once you break new all-time highs, historically speaking, that's gonna be an early stage sign of the next leg up, a full-on bull market. But I have to be honest with you guys here that in the near term, I think that we are a bit overextended and I'll just explain why. It's not me trying to be a perma bear. I think there's more upside for sure. Um, you know, that there's definitely a chance for that to play out. But right now we are seeing all the key signs here that used to lay as support or as a foundation for higher price levels in Bitcoin, now starting to act as resistance. Take a look here, for example, at the last, uh, really last couple of months here, since back here in January, right? We can take it here to the four hour time frame. I'll turn off the drawing so you guys can just see the indicators here. These are four hour EMAs, the nine, the 21 and 50 four hour EMAs. And you can see that these were kind of the baseline level support during more aggressive periods. The blue line came in during those flash corrections that got a lot of people spooked, really cleared through the order books on a lot of altcoins. Simply put, served as the foundational level of support where we did not get a four hour close below that line. And prices quickly and swiftly recovered from that correction. So you see the kind of response that happened during those kind of harsh sell offs. But if you take a look at what's happening now, you can just simply see within price action that not only were we starting to stall here at the top, similar to what we've done in the past at the blue line, but when we started to get the corrective forces that pushed us down to those lower moving averages, we weren't able to get the same kind of buy side support. There's a lot more sell side pressure and we snapped through clearly. And we're spending a lot more time below these moving averages as they are descending. And that is not a good sign here. When you're seeing price action alone drop down, that's one thing. When you see moving averages trending downward rather than upward, so the average trend is moving down over a certain window of time, but along with that, it's serving as clear resistance, that is not a good sign to see. Now, this dynamic could change here. I'm not here to say that you can't break above those moving averages. And if it does on a big way, then I would say, we're off to the races, continue going forward. But as a trader, you guys have to keep in mind that if you are not just hodling and dollar cost averaging and playing the really long term game, if you are trying to swing trade cycles, it is important to keep in mind that you need to be fair and utilizing these metrics, not just as a means to justify going long when they are holding a support, but be realistic and focus on the fact that when they're playing as resistance, that's likely a sign that we're due for a correction. And if we just take it back here again to the daily time frame, I don't think it's too crazy to say that after history has shown us, we tend to have corrections, at least during this run up here since the lows in November 2022, that after these 90% plus moves, we tend to get at a minimum a 20% correction. We can see over here as well, about a 20% correction in price. So I don't think that's too wild to ask for us to get something relatively similar, right? Coming down here towards around the 60K range, potentially down here to maybe something a little bit harsher, maybe coming down to a 30% correction, right? It's a bit of a widespread, and I'm not here to try to give you an absolute price target. What we do need to listen to is the moving averages and what price is telling us here. We can see here as well that within the altcoin market, while we are definitely excited about a potential altcoin trend, you know, like an altcoin cycle potentially building up, 
we can see very clearly that while ETH did great on its dollar pair, you know, over the past run up, it pretty much went in lockstep with Bitcoin. We can see though, that we're getting clear downward moves here and inability to really recover. Those moving averages that were acting as support are now acting as resistance. And beyond that, the ETH BTC ratio is not looking really great. It's not looking totally bearish. We have been able to remain a relatively neutral trend and keep up with Bitcoin since October of 2023. It's coming up on nearly half a year here. So that's good to see, but it's not the kind of altcoin cycle or altcoin dominance acceleration that we're looking for in order to have a real huge amount of bets on altcoins where we can just kind of hold for a couple of weeks or trade in and out of a couple of different plays as they move and be able to make exponential returns, right? So we are looking out for those signs. I think altcoins, again, are at a really good discount against Bitcoin. If we take a look at the altcoin season index on the yearly time frame, I definitely recommend if you're going to use this, use the yearly time frame. A lot of people mess up on that. Uh, definitely, uh, I think over here on the annual basis, we can see that according to history here, we've got a long way to go before we really had our altcoin cycle. So no, I don't believe we've seen an altcoin cycle. Whether or not we will get one in this run up as it's been mainly driven around the Bitcoin ETF, time will have to tell. My opinion is leaning towards the fact that whenever we have our final move here, there is going to be some kind of wave of mania. We've seen some of that in altcoins, uh, but we certainly haven't seen enough to justify calling it an altcoin cycle. And it's very clear here by the measurement of the altcoin season index, which tracks the performance of altcoins over a given period of time against Bitcoin. We are still very cheap here in this case in regards to the performance. And you can see that just analyzing total three. All right, we can see just looking according to history, while Bitcoin is at all time highs, we are still of a $400 billion away from even more than that, um, you know, than where we were back during this window of time. So again, keep that in mind here, but also understand that there are going to be heavy corrections along the way. And it's probably best to look to acquire some positions when we retest towards those longer term moving averages like the 50 day, the 100 day moving average that still signal signs of a broader uptrend, but at the same time, let you know that you're at least getting a good discount. That's where accumulation can happen and prices can then again, begin to reaccelerate from that point on. Right. Every once in a while, you need a cool down here, especially after the move we had here in total three, especially after the accelerated move we had in Bitcoin and also in Ethereum as well. From 2300 here on Ethereum back here in early February to just a little bit over a month to $4,000. You sometimes have to ask whether or not we've earned it or if we've gotten ahead of ourselves. And I think it's the latter of the two. I think that's the case that we're seeing right now. The markets need a sort of correction before we really continue higher. Unless we, again, maybe we'll keep an eye out here on this moving averages, maybe something changes, but for now the signs are showing. Data science models are looking good, but they're looking overextended in the short term. Take a look here at that unrealized profit or loss. We are in the kind of belief denial phase here. So we've still got room to go. According to history, we can test the upper band here. Uh, for the last couple cycles, we, we really haven't been spending time in the euphoria greed period very long. Uh, so we still got a little bit of ways to go, but it probably shows us here as we've seen back here during June of 2019. Uh, you know, we had, for example, pretty strong corrective force. We've seen in the past that this can be a range of chop where sometimes you go back into the optimism anxiety range. Again, I think this is simply showing us here that we're maybe a bit overextended in the short term. Our HODL ratio, again, history shows us we can go higher, but last cycle, this is a very important data science model, which has been great for finding accumulation periods and basically measures the differential between realized value on Bitcoin, right, when they were essentially last move on chain uh, versus the annual reading. We can see that this has made a really accelerated move here. So this is not a really good sign to see because you're seeing a lot of people realizing value. They're moving on chain BTC. And essentially, this could be a sign of a potential top coming in or a slowdown in the price trend. Uh, we still get, again, a nice accelerated move. It's definitely lower from where we were back here. The R HODL ratio is 15,000 points. We're at 7,750. So this could, again, leave us with some more room here to continue accelerating higher over the next couple of weeks, next month or so. But perhaps there's a correction in between there. Perhaps we get our, pre, uh, our, our post having correction that a lot of people are expecting is instead a pre having correction. We get something beforehand uh, where essentially a lot of this, uh, I think a lot of people have started to really um, in the narrative of the ETF start to price in this concept of the having bit coming in. And I'm, I'm someone who believes you can't technically price in the long-term beneficial factors of the having event. It only really happens when the daily 
supply and demand adjustment really kicks in because of the decreased block reward. But I think there are a lot of people buying in anticipation of that. Plus the ETF, they see that there's this guaranteed next bull market. It's going to go to 200K, uh, you know, some kind of really heightened figure. I don't know if that's really going to play out. All right, maybe we're a little bit overbought here in the short term. We can see the fear and greed index, right? In the last cycle, right? When you really get into the run up here, I don't use the fear and greed index as a tool to say like, oh, we've got a, a cycle top or the market's over, but it does serve as a good gauge, a little bit of a reality check to see, you know, how optimistic the market is. And we've seen it more euphoric in the past year, no doubt about that. Um, but again, price has really been moving in an accelerated fashion here over the past couple of weeks and we haven't had a nice solid correction in some time. So I think all three of these models at least are giving us certain hints that we could very well be due for some kind of nice, healthy 15, 20% pullback. Nothing crazy, nothing out of the woodworks, certainly minuscule compared to prior mid-cycle corrections we've had in the past. Doesn't make me a bear for saying that, that's just history. But the key thing I'd say here is that on that dip, we are looking for nice solid corrections in the altcoin space. Because right now, others' dominance, while we have been a, had a nice flush here on Bitcoin, right? Very similar to what we had back here in January, right? Others' dominance is holding up good. It's not rallying right now, right? So it's still keeping low. So you're not late to the party if this thing really starts to take off as an altcoin cycle would play out. But beyond that, it's not really selling off here. So I think the optimism around altcoins is growing bigger and bigger. The speculation incentive around meme coins, around Bitcoin infrastructure, around DPIN and AI, it's really entering towards its blow up top phase. And I think that's where a lot of the gains are going to be made here. I think we've already made phenomenal returns over the past couple of weeks. We made three successful trades on meme coins, but beyond that as well, there are gonna be a whole range of other narratives that are gonna to stand to benefit. So I'm really watching here to see how things play out. The one thing I notice here in the short term time frame is that unlike Bitcoin, where the moving averages are serving as resistance, our four hour time frame moving averages, you can see here that for the past two hourly tests, buyers have started to come in around these. So again, that, that can be subject to change here. I think if Bitcoin really starts flushing down, I don't know if you're gonna really see others' dominance kick off just yet, um, but we'll, we're gonna to continue to watch these moving averages because that is important. It's significant to see that there's that changing dichotomy between how the general performance of total three is versus Bitcoin and Ethereum, right? So that's a very important dynamic to keep an eye on here. So I think you know, the general point here I wanna emphasize before we dive into the macro is that when it comes to crypto, I think short term we're overbought, we're due for a correction. The indicators that we're watching in the market, whether they are momentum indicator, the blue and red line that we track on a lot of crypto plays, uh, the moving averages in the four hour time frame, most indicators will probably show you that essentially analyzing price itself Right, even just doing naked trading, just analyzing price itself, you will find that we're probably overbought in the near term. We've had a great percentage acceleration. At the same time though, I here believe that there is still a chance with the ETF, with the changing dynamics of those inflows, with the halving event coming to play, we could still very well see Bitcoin potentially move up over the next couple of months after a nice healthy pullback and be able to accelerate on to really substantial new all-time highs, not just something that's near the ballpark of the last highs. We're gonna to have to see if after that correction, same buy side pressure comes in, same mania and euphoria. But all I can say is that if it does come in, I think we have not had our altcoin cycle and it could be a very, very big rally in the broader altcoin space on the narratives that we've been watching where you can make some serious multiples far outpacing the returns of Bitcoin. So that's what we're gonna be watching for. Now I wanna go ahead, talk a little, a little bit here about the NASDAQ because this is where I, I want you guys to also Keep, uh, keep your expectations moderate, so to speak. Um, I, at the end of the day, as much as I love seeing the positive data on the data science and the price action and the returns we've been making in the altcoin market, the best thing that I always have learned from history is that if you don't balance a full 360 degree view, meaning you're not just focusing on one area, but finding a balance between analyzing what's going on in the micro market of crypto, which is still small in the grand scheme of things, globally speaking, and beyond that, looking at equities, looking at the global economy, looking at the direction of monetary policy and inflation, you will lose sight and unfortunately may end up losing a lot of gains on your positions if you're not focusing on the price action of crypto and you're not focusing on the macro context. If I take a look here at equities, right, we can see here very clearly that for over a month now, right, since back on February 9th, the NASDAQ, which has been leading the tech stocks, who have been leading this market, 
are starting to stall here, or at least have not made any accelerated moves above that level, right? We went a little bit below it, went a little bit high, but generally speaking, for nearly a month now, this major index of stocks, high growth AI plays, but a whole range of other positive high growth tech sectors have essentially stagnated here. Now, I want to emphasize that I think if we see a break on this 50 EMA on the four hour time frame, which is kind of held the support for the most part, we had a few anomalies here, like back here in January, but you can see here, that this is usually a period of time where if price spends enough time there, you can be pretty assured that you're gonna get a corrective force in market prices. We can see that back here, right after spending enough time below those moving averages, you really started to enter into a multi-month downtrend from here in July and to October, right? And I'm not even here to say that oh, it has to be a bear market or it has to be some you know, huge depressionary you know, flash crash or anything. I'm not trying to be melodramatic. I'm just trying to essentially assume here that according to history, we can have some kind of nice healthy correction. And, and that, that happens. It's happened here, for example, from July to October. And once you have rallies like this, where price accelerates, you know, 30% in a matter of what, less than half a year, some years you are happy to even have a 15, 20% annualized return in the SP 500 or the NASDAQ, right? So to see a 30% move like this after an already accelerated move off of those lows that let us up 41% and net overall, we're up 60% from those, those October lows. Right? That, that's pretty magnificent as is. And when you consider that a lot of that valuation increase has been at the heels of NVIDIA, which is now starting to showcase not only a clear uh, rejection candle here the other day, a really bad red candle, while we had an attempt at recovery here, we're now falling into those pockets. The moving averages were extended from the 50 EMA in the four hour time frame by 78 bucks on NVIDIA. Huge percentage correction just from one moving average to another, 7%. But beyond that, if we don't hold on those moving averages, boy, we may have a long way to cool down here. We might be getting out of the mania bubble phase around AI. And that's something you have to be incredibly cautious about here. This thing could continue accelerating, right? I'm not trying to say it could go up, it could go down, right? What I'm saying is you, you should listen to the moving averages. There are too many people out there who are gonna tell you it's gonna go one way or the other. And the smart trader doesn't really care about what the narrative is. They don't care about what the symbol is or if they like the fundamentals of the company. They come down to the fundamental question, hey, is the market with me or is it against me, right? And am I gonna trade with them or am I gonna try to beat the market, right? Essentially speaking, if these moving averages keep providing support, if we dip down to say the 50 EMA and get a solid bounce up like we had here, that's your cue for a couple more days, a couple more weeks, maybe even a month of more upside. And then you can reevaluate, right? In this case, we're, we're seeing some signs of weakness here. Not to mention the other Titan that is the, you know, basically on par with Microsoft to be the largest company in the world, Apple. Apple's just totally falling down here. The Apple Vision Pro was not the play that I think the market was really looking for. Uh, while it did get them optimistic at the start, it wasn't enough to really push Apple to new highs. It's still struggling at this $2.6 to $3 trillion market cap range as a stock. Microsoft as well, clearly starting to stall here. That's price action. It's been in a clear distribution pattern here. Typical Wyckoff setup here around this range in late January, early February. So no serious accelerated move here, but also no accelerated decline or extreme sell off below those moving averages. So I would say just, just keep an eye here on this guys. Keep an eye on it because we're spending more and more time here below those moving averages and chopping sideways. And as a trader, you don't wanna get caught in that. Now I wanna go ahead and talk, right? We talked about some different stocks. We can go down the whole list. There's thousands of stocks out there and even the Magnificent Seven would take some time to, to kind of fully break down. But I wanna go ahead and try to talk about why this might be happening here. Why it might be happening. I think it's because markets are starting to realize that essentially inflation is not done with and it will come back. I know it's a boring topic. I know we're tired of hearing it, let alone we don't like to think of inflation, especially if you're burdened by it, when you're going to the grocery store, when you're paying for gas, when you're paying for your rent, your mortgage. No one likes to think about the cost of living. It's not a fun topic. But it is important to understand from the macro context that essentially speaking, the Fed is far away from its target at 2%, which it seems very vehement about actually meeting towards. And beyond that as well, month over month, since back here in November, 
we have had accelerated month over month inflation to the point in which where if we were to use the last average three months uh, of uh, you know monthly increase in this case which is around 0.3 percent per month right that would essentially on an annualized basis give you a target you know inflation rate of 3.6 percent which is not only higher than the current figure now on an annualized basis but is still far away extended nearly double from what the fed is looking to get it down to and it can as the fed knows throughout history if it does not get it down then that will start to ramp up just as fast as it declined. It will start going from 3.6 annually to 5%, to 7%, to 10%. It can easily do that again when financial markets are trading the way they are and people are getting back to the feel-good times of the past. And it showcases the symptom here, which is that while the Federal Reserve has jacked up interest rates, other central banks have done the same. Um, you know, we're not having as much of the easy money of, of, of the times of COVID and during the pandemic where things were absolutely out the wazoo. At the same time, there is a wash of cash in the system. Property values are telling you this, equity markets are telling you this, and the general risk on sentiment is telling you that in the market. And I understand there's optimism around AI, but the key thing here is that we have been well overdue for some kind of substantial pullback in equity markets for some time. And I think it's very important to keep in mind a conservative principle of expectations for the next couple of weeks and months. As we get into this kind of final mania period here, I think going into April, May of this year, I think it's important to be having some cash on the side, not getting too overexposed to the markets, keeping an eye on the long-term technical setup of things, commodities like oil, which play a huge role in the measurement of inflation. Look at how, again, we, we not only haven't been able to get below the 200 week, which served to support two times. That's a really bad sign as is. But beyond that, we are pressing back up against the line of resistance again. And if this starts to really break out, you know, next stop is 95 bucks. If that breaks through and isn't able to be resistance, you're coming back up here to 123. I know a lot of people think that that can't happen, but I don't know. If, if you keep this kind of mania going on at equities, right, the supply and demand imbalance can come raging back. Right. So I'm, I'm not saying that that's you know 100% going to be the case. As we mentioned, we're going to be watching here how price plays out with these lines of resistance and support, how the moving averages are playing out. But so far, these inflationary pressures can't come back. Natural gas has dropped to like rock bottom here. So if this starts to reaccelerate, that's going to be an inflationary force. It's all stuff that could work against the Fed. And it all comes back here to crypto. Because while cryptocurrencies are seen as this alternative hedge asset class, you know, especially Bitcoin as this kind of safe haven that a lot of people want exposure to, right? I have no doubt Bitcoin is going to be the most resilient play out of any in the crypto space, you know, during a potential pullback. The key point here is this, that we need to focus on how price is reacting here. Because if we start to get that reinflation and the Fed is going to have to jack up interest rates even more, you are going to have the same dichotomy that you had or the same situation back in the 80s, where it is incredibly favorable to you to essentially tap into government bonds or treasuries to earn savings in your savings account. And it creates this dichotomy where you don't want to go in on the risk speculative assets uh, like equities or real estate uh, or even into cryptocurrencies, I think in this case, because those are all of the easy money assets that do well when there's an increase in the base money supply and there's stimulatory effects rather than contractor. If we have contracting effects in the economy, that is going to weigh down asset prices. We saw this back in the 80s, but beyond that as well, this is just a general principle here. When you start weighing the odds of your expected returns at an asset, and this is going to lead trillions of dollars to start moving from one asset class to another, going in from the risk on assets to the less speculative, right? So at the, at the time, guys, right, I want to make it very clear, like where we stand, closing remarks here. I think short term, Bitcoin and crypto need a little bit of a moderate correction. Moving averages are showing us that for the first time here since back in January. And beyond that, I think there's still potential lag run up here into April or May. We might have some good you know, times to come when it comes to crypto valuations and potentially can come up and even set that six digit, six digit figure of 100K or somewhere near there, right? But I don't believe in these kind of accelerated uh, narratives that Bitcoin's just gonna continue going on forever. Uh, I don't think the ETF as a dynamic is going to allow for it to just go on to a million dollars. These kind of crazy price expectations don't consider the fact that as Bitcoin moves up, there are gonna be more Bitcoin being willing to sell. 
And there is institutional demand, but I don't think there's that much to really drive it that high. Again, low probability scenario, it could play out. But if you want to know my opinion, I'm going to sit here and give you guys one of the more rational ones I can. And that we need to be cautious about the macro here if inflation really starts to kick back up. So that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this Macro Monday episode. If you did, consider dropping a like. It's a great way to support the channel. And if you guys are looking to maximize your returns when it comes to trading in cryptocurrencies, whether you're trading the long-term cycles, or if you're someone who's looking to simply invest long-term, dollar cost average, and lower your tax liabilities so you can maximize your returns at the end of the day, I definitely recommend you guys check out iTrust Capital, our partner, at the link down below in the description, who can help you get set up with a cryptocurrency IRA or individual retirement account. If you're in the United States, this is one of the best ways to legally minimize your tax obligations when it comes to the capital gains that you make on your assets. And there are different types of IRA account structures. We actually did a video on iTrust Capital that you guys can check out on the channel here in the next couple of days. But the key thing here is that iTrust Capital is focused on allowing you to essentially invest in a whole array of cryptocurrencies, taking upon the tax advantages of an IRA and being able to essentially start planning and preparing for retirement. You don't have to put all your funds in the IRA. You can still have your Coinbase account. You can still have your various different types of crypto brokers as well as your stock brokers. But the idea here is that iTrust Capital is going to help you to maximize that IRA contribution and be able to essentially start preparing substantially for retirement. So that's it for today's video. If you guys again want to check them out, the link down below in the description and sign up for an account. You guys can get $100 if you sign up for an account through my link down below in the description. But that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys have a fantastic day wherever you are. If you haven't, consider dropping a like on the video. And I'll talk to you guys on Wednesday at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Take care, everyone.